Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here, and today I'm going to be talking about something really uh, that's dear to my heart. It has to do with helping people, and it's what I do when I am not doing some of the funner YouTube videos like the GTA and stuff like that. It has to do with prison reform, and you're going to learn a lot right here. Not only prison reform, uh, prison abuse. And let me tell you what happened and, and where I'm going to go with this. But before I get started, just make sure you please check out all our videos. Go to our member programs. Check out our merch. Do all that. This helps support me for what I'm doing here. Uh, you, you guys are going to get an eye-opener today. Because I'm working on a case with a juvenile. I'm not going to mention any names here. But I just got back from speaking to a judge friend of mine. And we started debating. And he knows my passion for what I do. And he believes and he says, I'm right in all of this. And I got to thinking. So I came home. I immediately got to work. And what do I do? I, I, I can't stop. I get obsessed with what I do. Let me give you the background of this case. Here's a young man, 14 years old, trouble, absolutely getting in trouble, maybe selling a little drugs, doing stupid stuff that most 14 year old kids do and I'm not saying it's good or right at all in fact it's wrong but here's what they do and this happened in Arizona so I'm calling out Arizona and I'm gonna hope that we can get something going about this to maybe prevent this in the future for for the kids that are still there they take a 14 year old kid and they confine him at three weeks to start three weeks listen to this he gets nothing no education no uh he gets two books doesn't even get hygiene items in his cell doesn't get a pencil to write with now unless you were in incarcerated like me you're not going to understand what isolation and confinement does to the brain it totally warps the brain and what this Arizona area, and it's Maricopa County, and I'm going to get into that. And I thought they straightened that whole place out, but obviously it's not. It was called Durango Juvenile Facility or Durango something. And the people running this thing should be put in jail. And I mean that. And I'm going to get on to this and tell you exactly why. Here you take young people, 14 years old. They throw them in a cell alone. Nobody to talk to. Nobody to write, not even to write a journal, not to do little. What do you think goes through a mind of a 14-year-old kid who is isolated this? He is getting abused by the state in such a way that he's going to have no trust in the state at all. Did he mess up? Absolutely. We're, not, we're going to take that and put that aside. Is he a murderer? Absolutely not. Did he even rob someone at gunpoint or anything? No, nothing like that. More of a petty stuff little stuff selling drugs maybe minor and i'm not talking about you know any kind of weight of anything of that nature i am talking about a kid that's done a lot of things that a lot of us out there have done and didn't get abused by the state that they're getting abused by i ended up emailing the probation they call him a probation officer i emailed an attorney supposedly that works for them but really is with the state and I didn't hear anything back, and that's kind of got me disturbed, too, because they know what they're doing, and they're just ignoring people on this whole end. They think this is going to go away. It's not going to go away. What the, I, It just boggles my mind. I'm really disturbed of what goes through, because I know what isolation is about. I know what goes through your mind, whether it's suicide, and why am I, am I that bad? Am I really this kind of a person to be totally, when I say isolated, I am not talking where you can even talk to another person. You're not allowed to talk. This is not allowed to talk. There's no education. We are talking about a 14-year-old in the hyper point of brain development. The most brain development you're going to get is probably between 12 and 17. Then it keeps developing. The male brain doesn't mature until it's about 25. The female is about 23. What they're doing to a young person in this kind of facility is just beyond my mind. And it got me to thinking about my time in the hole, in prison, and my abuse, and what happened to me. And I started going through my stuff, and I want to show you what I got out. See this? Federal cr Criminal Codes of Rules. You can even see my initial on it. This is my number on this book. 
This book came from the prison system. Uh, not from the system. I had these sent into prison when I was working law work. These are the code of, uh, criminal codes of federal regulations. It, it, it's, you need this to do any file, any lawsuits or anything else in prison. And you want to learn the law, that's what you do. And this is the civil codes. That was the criminal codes. And it's so funny. You can see my name and number on these books and it brought back memories. But I'll be honest, it brought back disturbing mem memories because it brought back what's going on right now and how things haven't changed and how these facilities might be saying, oh, it's the COVID, oh, it's a, it's a crisis. You know, we have constitutional rights. If you can lose your constitutional rights during any crisis, you have no rights. None. George Collins said that, and boy, was he right. It's a shame what they're doing and in the name of COVID, and how much abuse is going on. And it has to stop. It's got me to the point where I was shaking the other night. And, and, and I, I really was. I was so mad about it. I ended up getting out some more books. This was my book. The Prisoner's Guide to Survival. And look at the paperwork. Look at the stuff that I have on this book. I know this book back and front. This is when to how to file. What you can do and stuff in prison. Well another book came up and this is what they call the site book a site book is a book that you would go to to refer to cases uh, you, you you to get a case in one area and they can refer it to another case and that's how law is set down so when the Supreme Court says a law it is law of the land and the circuits the different federal circuits around the United States have to follow that Supreme Court ruling have to if the Supreme Court didn't rule on a case, they then follow the precedent of the circuit they're in. Like Florida's in the 11th Circuit. California's in the 9th Circuit. There's different circuits around the United States and the federal circuits in those jurisdictions. The Appeals Court, the Appellate Court, Appeal Court is the one that has the say and they'll set precedent in that circuit. And then the district courts follow those precedents. Obviously, the Supreme Court is the law of the land. How the Supreme Court gets what it does, it's by the Constitution, which was passed by our framers, and every right there is right in our Constitution. The Eighth Amendment to the Constitution is about cruel and unusual punishment, and what's happening to that boy, and not just that boy. That's why it's not a singular case for me anymore. This is about a case with, with what's going on in a, a system that, uh, sadly, I believe it's happening all over. And what happened because of that, I got to reading my law books, talking to judges, talking to law enforcement officers, talking to people in the profession, good and bad, and other inmates who are out today who they know me and they know how I get. And I won't let something drop. And I won't let this drop because they're doing such harm to these young people Listen, if you get, if there's a crime committed against you and one of these kids is in a facility like this, you belong suing the state. You belong suing the people. And you can get around the protections that people say they can't get around because I have done it as well. And it can, and I can get into a whole video on that. And I just might do that. But this video has me hot. So I'm going to read a few things and I really want you to take them to heart. I went into this book. And I turned to a few pages, uh, and there's some stuff that I had which brought back memories from way, way back. And, and it made me think, wow, this is, this is just stuff that, I mean, it, it, it brings back such memories. Here's a case right here. Campbell v. Sykes, 169th Fed, 3rd, 3rd Circuit, uh, 1353. This is actually the 11th Circuit. Although the Constitution does not require comfortable prisons, it does not permit inhumane ones. And what they're trying to say is, you know, I'm not asking for a young person to have Nintendo or uh, Xbox or anything of that nature. How about let's not make him a psychopath? Let's, I, I wish, and I really mean this, I wish the people who put these people in prisons like this this judge or whoever they put, this probation officer who's, who's the one who recommends and they follow what that person should go to, that person should be in prison. 
that person should have to spend the time in the exact same conditions as that young person so they know what it's like they know what it feels like to look at a wall and start going crazy literally going crazy I can't even imagine what's going on with this 14 year old kid I really don't it, it boggles my mind that we as a society are still at this level in 2020 where we're taken and we know what isolation does to a person we know what solitary confinement does to a person no less a 14 year old we're not talking about a murderer here we are not talking about a major threat to society we are talking about a kid who did kid stuff needs punishment needs corrective behavior but he does not need this kind of isolation that's going to damage him for life. You can't tell me you can put somebody in a cell with zero stimulation. I mean, not even a pencil and a paper to write his thoughts down, see what he's done. One of my ways of helping young people is to give them writing diaries, and then we go over their diaries. Another way is education. You get a kid in this kind of environment, there's zero education. Oh, the COVID. Here's this. There's no interaction with another human being. They come out for two hours in the morning to brush their teeth and make a phone call off of a, a phone that, you know, they have to call five or whatever numbers on their phone. This is wrong. They cannot then take this person. They throw him in the cell. They throw him in that cell. There's no water, no brush your teeth, no hygiene items. This to me is, is, if this isn't cruel and unusual punishment, nothing is. I ended up reading some of the great things that are come out of these books. Now, as a guy who was in prison, as you all know, from 1996 to 2007, this book was one of my, and I call them, one of my favorite books. Because it came with, they have what they, what they call them in here, they call them legal epigrams. Epigrams are little sayings by various people that make so much sense. And when you look at the dates and the times and the people who say these things, you're going to wonder what has been happening to our country. And you know, the more and more people that follow my channel and the more and more good people. I met a, uh, a corrections officer at a Lompoc. Nice guy. Wish him the best. Sounds like the normal kind of guy. He was a guard. And he sounded like a really nice guy, and we, we've communicated back and forth. I have nothing against anybody. I understand the system better than most, and, and when I get to reading these, it makes me want to get back into my legal work so much more. A couple of them will right jump out at me. Arthur Schopenhauer, a German philosopher in 1860, said this, Compassion is the basis of all morality. Think of that. Compassion is the basis of all morality. Let me keep going. Michael Enquine. There is no man so good who, were he to submit all his thoughts to the laws, would not deserve hanging ten times in his life. Think about that. How many times have you thought about doing wrong? How many times have you could have done something wrong and been to prison? And I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 12 years old watching this or you're 70 years old watching this. I hope you're understanding what we're doing to young people and, and it, it, it kills me. It, it, it blows me away. John Locke, English philosopher in 1704 wrote, if punishment makes not the will supple, it hardens the offender. That one jumped out at me today because what we're doing is totally ruining somebody. We're not helping them. We are not helping a person by doing what we're doing to them. We are hardening in their heart and making them a lot worse. These people, you know, I wish they would give me a call and ask me what they can do better on incarceration, on how to handle young people out of control. And trust me, it's no easy way. And I'm not even saying confinement is not part of it. But it has to be the right way. If you don't do it the right way, you're only worsening the situation and you're bringing a psychopath out into the world. So they're wrong and they're wrong in such a degree I had to make a video about this. Thomas Jefferson, we all know who he is, the third president of the United States. Experience hath shown that even under the best forms of government, 
those entrusted with power have, in time and by slow operation, perverted it into tyranny. Think of what he said. Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States. And he's right. We have to check these people in power. We have to check these people in power. These people who are doing this to people, that, that they are so wrong. I'm going to start a campaign against them. I am. It is starting now. This is lit in a fire, guys. Prison reform is here. And we have the, the masses to do something. Thomas Jefferson, again, third president of the United States. This found among his papers. Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. So we need to be doing what we're doing. We have to resist this. Two, a society that will trade a little liberty for a little order will deserve neither and lose both. Replay that right here. Please, replay this video. I'm going to repeat that one. A society that will trade a little liberty for a little order will deserve neither and lose both. That blows me away because it is so, so true. I'm going to keep going because this has got me, a whole bunch of this stuff has got me, you know, totally, uh, my, my brain ain't functioning right, guys. It really isn't. Uh, this has got me, I, I couldn't even change. I got home and had to start reading books and I had to start uh, uh, researching what I what I do. And, and I can't wait. I got to get out of my clothes. I got to do stuff. I got to get back into my, my uh my routine, but this is, it just blew me away. Louis de Brandis, U.S. Supreme Court Justice. Listen to this. Louis de Brandeis, U.S. Supreme Court Justice. Crime is contagious. If the government becomes the lawbreaker, it breeds contempt for the law. There's no question that is true. The government is the lawbreaker in this situation. They are doing, they are breaking the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution. And if they want to sit and debate me about this, I will debate it on a radio show or anywhere they want. What they're doing to the people in Arizona and the young people in Arizona is wrong. You cannot justify what you're doing. The kid is one thing. The kid I'm working with was one thing. The mom is a strong mom. The family's a good family. Are they torn? Are they having problems? Absolutely. Good people. Good people. Their son does not deserve this. And obviously, they need, they're the ones that had to pull some triggers to get the help they need for this child. But the system then fails them. They don't know how to handle these. And they just think it's a blanket thing. Don't give me this coronavirus crap. The coronavirus, now we're manpower. We can't do this. We can't educate. We did. Well, then you better figure out a better system because the Constitution shouldn't be averted and shouldn't be trampled on because of any coronavirus. Our constitution should be solid. It should be more solid during times of crisis, not less solid. I don't need the constitution when everything's going well. I need the constitution when it's not. That's what makes a country strong. Here's another one, author unknown. It is just as well that justice is blind. She might not like some of the things done in her name if she could see them. Oh my God, if that doesn't rip you apart, it's so true. You know, uh, you know, we have this scale of justice and we're really failing. We're failing in a big way, people. We really are. I'm not kidding you. It, it, it's got me down. It's got me down. Here's one that really gets me. Oh, it's got me so mad. A population of sheep in time will surely beget a government of wolves. You know what I'm telling you there, right? We all gotta stand up. We all gotta unite. We all gotta get together and we gotta put a plan together and I'm doing that. You can bet I'm doing that. And I am gonna try to get the people out of office who are really subverting this whole entire system because they don't belong judging other people. I tell people all the time, and if you know me at all on this channel, I don't judge people. I'm no judge. I'm not here to judge anything what you do. I don't care what color you are, what sexuality you are, what disability you have. I judge you as a person, period. You, how you treat me, and how I treat you. And that's the way it should be. It shouldn't be what's going on right now. These people sit on their high horses, 
and they know what they've done wrong. I can't tell you how many places and times I've seen the official kids, the kids of the officials in these places get break after break after break. Nothing happens to them. And some poor kid who doesn't have the money or doesn't have the, the connections is abused in a system that's broke. And that's got to stop. It's got to stop. This showed me in 2020, in May of 2020, we are so broken in our juvenile system and we need to fix it. It needs to be fixed in the biggest way. I am so pissed that these people didn't even email me back. I'm going to do it again. And after that, I'm going to ask you to help me. I'm going to ask everybody out there to help me. And we're going to email and send letters. And we're going to get these people out of office and out of the positions they're in that they're ruining people's lives. Because let me tell you something. It, it, it eats me alive to realize what goes through a kid's head when he's in a position like that. I know what it's like. I went crazy. I thought I was going to kill myself. And now they're putting this kid through this at 14 years old. Are you off your rockers? Are you really that inhumane? Are you people that sick? Don't come off and tell me, oh, but you don't know what he did. He was nasty to his mother. He did this. He stole money from his mother. He did this or he did that. Let's deal with it. But let's not deal with it. That's like saying, hey, you know what? The guy was starving and he stole a slice of pizza, but he stole it. So let's cut his arm off. Come on. Let's let punishment fit the crime and let's think about rehabilitation. Let's stop this bullshit we're talking about. Let's talk about what it takes to help people not ruin their lives, not put irreparable damage to their brain. I can't even imagine what a poor kid goes in there crying in that cell. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's blowing me away. I can't, I, I'm at the point where I'm telling you, we gotta do something, man. This system is broke and it needs fixing, and Arizona, you're gonna get first. I'm coming, I wanna talk to people there. I wanna do a radio show there. If you know people there, you know any radio people or newspaper people, please email me, please email me, because I wanna get this out there, and not only do I wanna get it, I wanna change it, and it's not just there, it's all over the United States. Talk about human rights, my ass human rights. They have no right to talk to any other country about human rights until they fix their own backyard. I think I said enough. Uh, I'm just disgusted today, and it's not you. Um, thank you guys for letting me vent, uh, because that's what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm going to vent, and I'm putting a plan together. So please, help me. Help me in any way you can. Uh, I don't care what it is. If we write letters, if we email, we flood them, and I don't care what we do. We're going to get together, we're going to go as one, and we're going to start making changes. Because that's the only way it can be done. And that, that's my, my purpose. I think it is. We're having fun here. I love YouTube. I love my YouTube family. I really do. I'm, I'm enjoying you guys, and thank you very much. Thanks for your support, everybody. Please keep following this situation. Keep following us. Pass the work. Please pass this video on. Pass this video on. Please share it. Push it out there. I want everybody to know about this place. And it's terrible. Maricopa County, Durango Juvenile, worst of the worst. What they're doing to people should be illegal and people in their head should roll and they should go to jail. Tell me they shouldn't. Why don't you or somebody out there, if you're associated with that, have the gall to email me and I'll talk to you. And if you can justify what happened to these kids, I'll apologize to you right on this YouTube channel. Ain't happening. Because what's happening, I know. I know when it's lies. I know. I could tell when a kid or a person in a facility, and you don't know who's telling me this stuff. You don't even know if it's one of your people telling me this stuff. Because let me tell you something. You have no idea how I'm getting my information. And I'll tell you what. You deserve to, you, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Every one of you. You should be ashamed of yourselves. And I mean that in the worst way. Damn, you're wishing me, get me pissed off more and more. Hey, everybody, just listen. Please share this. Please subscribe. Do it, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get into all that. Do what you want. Get our shirts. Do what you're going to do. Help us out. We're coming. Prison reform is here, and it's starting right now. Thanks for watching, everybody. God bless. Stay safe. And you know what? Be active with me. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.